All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We tuned into another Midnight Mirage Classic, another interview with Amin Aleem, and we're gonna go into the mind of Amin Aleem and you know get his opinion and perspective on some things, so the supporters out there can you know get familiar with the brother. So our first question will be this: What's your perspective of people who say that spirituality has to be practiced according to strict religious rules? And the example I'll give, you know, as a preface to this, will be. In the New Testament, we read about the prophet Jesus or Yahweh and his battle with the Pharisees. And the Pharisees basically represented a quote unquote intelligent group of class of Israelites that thought they understood Islam and the deen and the law better than everybody else in the Sharia. So they were telling people that in order to eat, they had to wash their hands a certain way, pray a certain way. And they were really switching up a lot of what Moses put down in the Torah in the Old Testament. And you know really being strict in ways that they didn't have to so what a lot of jesus was you know prophesying and telling the people was that you do have to uphold the law so it's not like you just abandoned the sharia that moses said in the old testament but this strict way that the pharisees are putting on top of it is really their way of just exalting their own ego so you know what's your opinion of that because you got people out here that may read the bible um and they may follow the culture the shemitic culture of either a christian um, Israelite or a Muslim so what's your angle on that when people say oh you a hypocrite if you're not doing this and you know just some of those strict rules man I mean it be a lot of it, it be a lot of ego sometimes we have more knowledge than other people and so we tend to be like so happy to get on their ass like you ain't doing it this way you make voodoo this way you make goose this way or you know you supposed to wash your face this way all that strict stuff, especially when you know it's a baby coming irritant but within the religion or the group or whatever. You can't be doing all that hard stuff. You know what I mean? Cause don't nobody know everything. You know, a lot of us just really we know a lot, but we know a lot of the basic. It gets deeper than that. So yeah, the people that be doing all that strict stuff, just like even sometimes at them churches and stuff, you know. Everybody got their own walk and stuff like that. Now, when you some bullshit, you some bullshit. But when you see brothers and sisters striving, even in the mouth sometimes, you see brothers and sisters striving, trying to be right, you just can't be jumping down on their ass because they don't know certain sewers or how these or tap cereal about stuff that's going on. So people like that be like kind of real hypocrite because they forget that they're human. And human go through human ass shit. You know, some people might backslide, might read it out, so whatever the case may be. And you know, sometimes a lot of, of put you in that position to get humiliated just like you trying to humiliate or be strict or somebody else. So yeah, that stuff be running people away. And all you gotta do is really have a good character. You know, whatever you studying, um, know what you're studying find out the language, the root word, the prefix, the substance, the suffix or whatever. Learn what you read and um and also look up the author and they credibility and they credibility um you know what I mean. Yeah, they the credibility, credibility mm -hmm. they credibility, what they got going on. You gotta search deep and strive. But yeah, don't people that be strict man, a lot of people they don't be like you know. So let me ask you this. So you being from the streets, um you know, come from a lot of hardcore situations. You know, maybe you've done some deeds in your life that were dirty. You know, you probably slimed a few people out before. Um, <laughs> and now that you're on the righteous path, you found Islam, you believe in a higher power, you know, you get your spirit right with God. But at the same time, that's not like you're gonna just leave who you are. Um, most brothers that come from a street background or just was fellowshipping in the streets, even if you weren't involved in criminal activity or any kind of violent activity, not any kind of illegal activity, meaning you're not going against the county, you're not going against the state government, you're not breaking any federal government um, laws, and also you're not breaking no kind of Sharia, you're not breaking you know any kind of Torah laws or anything like that. Um, so what, what's your take on you know you being a man that's involved in making music? You know, of course, a lot of it's going to come from a street genre. Um, it'll include you know graphic you know details, um, some things including sexuality murders the drugs things involved in the street so how do you walk that fine line you know by balancing the streets um and the culture and you know the grassroots that you've come from your experiences and you know how that has in factored into your personality and the new you the higher version of you your higher self 
practicing Islam. How do you balance the streets in Islam? You balance it out like basically like the streets. Islam is basically like life itself. And the streets are also like life itself. But you got to know how common sense. Like I've been out of prison going on five years. I think that's good. You know what I mean? You got to not want to go back to a place that you promised a lot that you don't want to go back to when it was hurting. So you got to watch who you be around. You know what I mean? You got to watch what type of substance or wherever you, you consume in your body. Alcohol, weed, liquor, whether if it's cocaine, edge pills, Percocet, whatever these people own out here. You got to know, you got to surround yourself around good people and try to do as many as good deeds as you can possibly. You know what I mean? And just, I think it's based off the circle you choose and the environment you chose to put yourself. And so I know if I'm hanging around, a lot, like how we used to be in Pakistan, like Rollo, the apartments Rollo brought, we all was doing good. You know what I mean? We were still praying. You know, we were still going to Juma. You know, we were trying to get our barricades the best way we can and stuff like that. And so we used to be like a million deep, so we stay in contact with each other. We stay in contact to the chain game. We never forget about the brothers that's down there. We send them something whenever we can. And so I feel like balancing everything out is not, it's not forgetting where you came from. And so, you know, stay positive, be on God's side or whatever the case may be. You know, cause the streets, the street, the streets will never come out of nigga. You know what I mean? Once a nigga street nigga, you might not practice street way, but the street still gonna be in you cause you ain't gonna forget about the stuff you've been through, the times you got shot, the times you don't shot niggas, the times you don't got hurt, the times you don't hurt niggas, the times you don't got locked up, they still like be in you. So I say the best way to balance it out, man, is not forgetting where you came from and try to, you know, stay on the dean. Well, if it's on your phone, your app, your phone, well, if you got a Korean or whatever, stay around positive brothers, and that's how you balance the dean out with that. Or right. you balance, you know, Islam in the streets with that. Right. So um, when you were in prison, what, you know, are some stories that you heard of Islam, uh, stories you can remember from the Bible when you were growing up in school, uh, various surahs and chapters, which one of them, which ones helped you, you know, your mental rehabilitation? And also what biblical characters is, you know, uh, Islamic prophets, you know, stood out to you and were of great inspiration? Uh, I say the Rasulullah, first off, uh, I say Surah while also, how it talks about how time is a token. Um, surah E-Clash, you know, everybody know that Surah. The Al-Fatiha, of course, that's the mother of the Quran. And um, that basically was my favorite um, surahs that I used to like to recite, whether I'm on leading prayer or on giving a tileem or something like that. And I used to like it being, I used to like hearing it being recited when I used to go to Juma and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, those, those are the type surahs that got me through. I like the brother um, Dawood, David, that's King David, um, who uh, Isha, uh, Yahya, which is John the Baptist, uh, Solomon, Salome, you know, a, a variety of those had interesting uh, stories and stuff. And it's like when you read it and you peer, it's like it may, helps you feel better, especially after you pray, you know, it makes a lot of, you may toggle or whatever the case may be, but reading about those specific prophets, oh, and Musa, can't forget Musa, you know, which is which is Moses. Um, just reading about those, it just give you a peace of mind and what they went through and how they um how they evolved, prevailed and stuff like that. And uh, some of the, on my songs on the albums I'm doing though, it talks about that. But I put the street, to, um, I put the street glitch in it too. So yeah, those, those, that's it right there. So let me ask you this. So, um, you know, a lot of people go to church, they read about these biblical characters. People may go to Juma, they learn about Islamic prophets and they get them as a source of inspiration. And usually when they leave, um, a lot of them will find themselves, if they're Christian, you know, they find themselves praying to God or praying to Jesus and want his help. And, you know, and a lot of the Muslim brothers, they'll find themselves, you know, either giving a lot of praise to the prophet Muhammad or Allah. 
and wanted them to do all the work. So you as a man, do you take the Islamic stories and, you know, the influence that these men went through and um, the trials and tribulations and how they achieved and rose above them? Do you use that as a source of inspiration to become your own biblical Quranic character? Is Amin Aleem a Quranic or biblical character in your own life? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially like, um, you know, the Rasul, okay, when he met Khadijah, uh, she was wealthy. And, you know, we try to, I, I'm not saying this in no, you know, I'm not trying to put no twists or no flips on it. But the Rasul had beautiful character and stuff like that. He met a, um, his first wife was wealthy. You know what I mean? You know, he had about 13 wives and stuff like that. You know, every man be like liking that stuff like that. So, uh, and it makes you feel good, you know. But you got to, it, it's certain other conditions and stuff. I don't want to read, go into that. But um, you all can go look up um, in the Sahih al-Bukhari or you can look in the Quran, the Tapsir. Um, this is for the men, though. And, um, and we try to read more about that. I don't want to get all into that. But you know, like um, King Solomon, how he had the gym that was good, like helping him out with a lot of stuff. You know, that who, who created um, body armor, uh, or who who could talk, actually talk to the animals, the ants and stuff, who could have communications and stuff. And I take that as um, a lot talk to you through people, animals, or whatever the case may be. It could be a gesture, an animal make, or whatever. But you you listen to those. Um, inspirational stories and you know you try to like take that and strive with it you know how, or how like Isha was really you know healing people from leprosies and, and raising people up making the, the, the sick uh, unsick again healthy again so you know it's a variety of stuff just something you gotta be willing to discipline yourself to, to, to read it could be one page a night you know, just, you know, that's, that's how it is. All right. <clears throat> so my next question is this. Um, we know that the, the word black references a color. And we know that the word Africa or African represent, references a continent that actually is made up of a variety of countries. So you being someone born in America, do you consider yourself black or African? Man, I consider myself, I'm, I'm a black American. I'm a Mediterranean tone American, a brown American. I'm not from Africa. I wasn't born in Africa. I ain't never meet none of my ancestors from Africa. And so people be saying like, I'm an African American, everything for Africa. Africa was not the only continent. This whole world was based on one continent. And then it split up into all these different continents and so, but it was all one. And it's a scientific fact that black people was on this earth more than before any race. So it's black in everything. So how I'm gonna say I'm an African American? No, I'm an American. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people be brainwashed or, or still be thinking thinking that's a lie. Right. You know? You're right, man, you're right. So, you know, speaking about of American culture, you know, the indigenous melanated people, uh, what's your opinion and perspective of the average so-called black female or black woman today? Man, the average, Woman today. Let's let's talk about the so-called black ones, the melanated American ones. The the okay, the melanated American ones. It depends on they 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 age range and stuff, you know, because we be saying like all these women's a queen and stuff. They probably was born like that or whatever, but you know through society and making bad choices and on that slime shit, that queen no shit don't went out the way. You got to rebuild. You got to rebuild your, your your soul and repent and do your deeds to get back to that nature. But it is thought culture. Like, it, it is thought culture. And we don't made it so cool now. You know what I mean? I know they be making a post, they be like, um, you might tell a girl, shut up, bitch. She might be like, period. Like, they be happy when you call them out the name because I know growing up, if it was a thought in the neighborhood or even at the school, or who live close by. And we catch you doing that thought shit, we was gonna be like, oh, she's so dead. You gonna, we gonna join you every day at school until you get depressed enough to go home to your mother and they gonna have to move you to another school or another neighborhood because you the laughing stock. 
So when you get to that neighborhood, that next neighborhood, you ain't gonna wanna be no thought no more. Cause you don't wanna get embarrassed no more like that. You know what I mean? But now it's so cool. Even these like these women like, I am what I am. I'm a thought. And I think some of the music done influence these chicks to be like that. You know what I mean? Look at the porn and stuff. Look at all type of freak shit on that. Some of that stuff I didn't even think was even going on. So I asked a couple of women, like, what's up with this goddamn uh, women like getting a chain ran on them and stuff like that? And they be like, yeah, that's what's going on and stuff. So they kind of open your eye up to not put nothing past no lady, especially no medicine than lady. In America, and I love and I love all my black um, women. I love them all and stuff. But certainly, come on, man. Let me you ask know, you this: you know So, what do you think about the ones who, you know, they on the thought shit, but they use the Hebrew and the Quran, you know, or practicing as a Jewish or a Muslima, but really they probably still on the thought shit. Just like you got certain ox who really still on the gang shit, and they try to twist that with the Islam. Man, first, them thoughts they be trying to be the Hebrew. Real Christian and and um and and and, and the ops, I mean the Muslims. Like you gotta hide your faults. Whatever you do should only be between you and the law, or whatever. So they thought and stuff like that. You know, make it to where nobody like know it and stuff. And don't be trying to and, and they be trying to use the religion of anything just because they see oh I got me a duck I got a nigga. I could just act like I followed this or answer this, cause I know he gonna take care of me. Do my real devious people, and for these niggas trying to switch the game, mean go up with the dean or whatever. That's like dead ass wrong. You can't have two hearts. Now, if you were a record label or a football team, or you start your own organization and you name it for yourself, that's all right. But trying to game bang and be in the Muslim community at the same time, that's bid that. That's in that's innovation. That's bid that. How could you how could I say I'm this and I'm that at the same time? No, you gotta have one heart. And it's not what you say out your mouth, it's what's really what's in your heart. You feel what I'm saying? But me, I don't be liking that stuff. You know, I embrace every brother that, you know, try to say they Muslim or practice or whatever. But if you game banging and shit like that, I can't really take you serious of the dean. Cause it's long, no brothers finna cross each other out like that. Or your blood and property is sacred and honor is sacred. Nine times out of 10, any real believing person, whether it's Muslim, Jewish, the real Jewish, or the Christianity or the Hebrew or whatever the case may be, they all know that it's in the same knowledge or whatever. But if I know, if I see you something else, and you trying to say, oh, I saw no leg with this, that, man, fuck out my face, bro. Right. I ain't no, you ain't no, you ain't no IQ. Right. You feel me? Until you let all that other shit go. Right, right. Well, there you all have it. Um, Another interview with I Amin mean, Aline, Street Celebrity. Y'all stay tuned for the next one. We out.